Hey everybody, another exciting day. The new data slate is out. And another one of my favorite broods is here. If you thought the Tyranids were scary before, boom, baby! This is it. Let me tell you about a little thing I'm going to call the Sky Blight Swarm. This is a new formation from the Invasion Data Slate. Let me read you the propaganda first. The teeming hordes of the hive mind have always included winged bioforms. The better to hunt down prey creatures that the earthbound swarms cannot catch. However, the latest Tyranids invasions to assail the galaxy have featured ever more of these creatures. Perhaps this is an adaptive response to conquer the majestic hive cities of the, of the Imperium. Perhaps it is purely because a winged warrior beast is, more effective, is a more effective killing machine than a terrestrial counterpart. Ultimately, such considerations matter little. When the sky blight swarms descend in a flurry of leather wings, lacerating claws, and spitting bioweapons, their victims must either fight or die. Escape is not an option. And that's really kind of true with this one. This is for all the people, and I've actually tried to do this myself in the past, who want to create a gargoyle tyranid army. I forgot to mention this completely in my last videos. It is, uh, it, it was always a popular theme back in the day. You want all gargoyles or an all-flying army. Uh, boom! These guys make that possible. So let's see what's included in here. This formation of a sky blight swarm consists of one hive tyrant. A tyrant. <clears throat> One hive crone. Two harpies. Three gargoyle broods. Uh, the only formation restriction, which is not a surprise, is that the hive tyrant must take the wings biomorph. After that, as far as I understand it, you are able to customize these any way the codex allows. <clears throat> so basically that would come down to the gargoyle broods with how large you want to make them. Do you want to keep them small? Do you want to upgrade them? Do you make them huge? Now, my immediate uh, ideas on this is that you, you want to keep them small and heavily upgraded. Why would you want to do that? Normally, I like maximum unit sizes, but this is different. This is different, and it comes to a special rule. First, before I go into that, one hive tyrant with the formation. So, obviously, this increases the number of hive tyrants you can have in a Tyranid army uh, considerably when you consider this. Even if you just take the other two as your HQ choices, you're now talking three flying hive tyrants if you desire wow <coughs> with a crone and two harpies on top of that just to make things fun but but let's go on special rules sky swarm each time a gargoyle brood from this formation is completely destroyed Roll a d6. On a 4+, plus, you can immediately place a new unit into ongoing reserve that is identical in terms to the original number of models, weapons, and upgrades to the unit that was just destroyed. These new units count as being part of the original formation. So roll a d6 as described above if they are subsequently destroyed themselves. Ha! <laughs> Victory points are awarded as normal for new units in this formation that have been completely destroyed. So in that case, yay. 
but this is why I said I like the smaller units because on one hand you know what uh, uh, keeping them rolling in is is a good thing I mean a nice small high value unit you don't have to worry as much about the points now that was always one of the gripes I had about upgrading um, tyrannid units so much is that you got these things that you know are going to die in mass but you upgrade them all the hell and and you're gonna have to pay the points from them this takes care of that have your super small unit of upgraded units and boom it just comes back on a four plus which goes to my other videos which i talk about that i love the infiltration i love the death leapers i love the lictors and their control of deviation so now with this you're going to get three gargoyle broods, which will always come back in on ongoing reserve, which then you'll be able to place non-deviation all over the table any way you like. Can you see the possibilities? But we are not done yet, just in case you thought we were. There is a second, and this one I, I'm saving the best for last. I'm saving it for last, and here it is. Objective secured. All gargoyle units in this formation have the objective secured special rule. What is that? Well, let me tell you. A unit with this special rule controls objective markers. Boom. Controls objective markers. Like, that's not good enough. So these become scoring units for, uh, or, or, never mind. They can take objectives as gargoyles but let's move on further they can keep the objective even if an enemy scoring unit is within range of the objective marker unless that unit also has the objective secured special rule so barring those this guys hold objectives even when another scoring unit can be within range. Can you see the possibilities now? Now you go back and watch all my other videos about control armies and infiltrating and not walking across tables, and you combine this with the flying unit just sitting back there, and you can put these all on the table, and... The, uh, and the, ha! <clears throat> Game over, man game over I, it's just becoming more true every time uh more of these to come i'm telling you tyranids the most deadliest army in the game keep watching see you next time